Hey guys, ECRG here. Today we're going to do a little bit of interview prep, as you can see by the title of this video. And I'll explain more after the intro. Cue the intro. Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another video. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of interview prep, as I have an interview coming up soon for another position in clinical research. And I'm not going to tell you the position just yet. Uh, we'll do another video about it. And I'm going to just have some generic questions that they may ask and how I would respond to them. So this is more just for me to help prepare and better smooth over my answers. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this, so my answers will probably be a little bit raw. So I've got four questions here that I will say, and then I will come with an answer for on the spot. Once again, no notes, no nothing. The only thing I have here is um, the questions and uh, how I would respond to them. Now, I may fumble over my words a little bit just because in the interview, I'd be a little bit more specific, but because this is going out on the internet and the YouTube community, I may not want to reveal some intricate details here. So forgive me if I stumble over something or if I pause for a minute and gather my regather my thoughts again while I'm uh, providing my answer there. So once again, if you don't really care about how I interview or what my responses are or you don't you feel like this won't be helpful to you. You can go ahead and uh, stop this video and go look at another video or wait till we post again. But hopefully this is helpful to somebody out there and go ahead and abuse me in the comments for for my answers if you want or, you know, leave some positive feedback down there as well. So without further ado, uh, let's get into the first question. So the first question is, tell us about yourself. So first of all, I would like to first thank you guys for inviting me to interview today. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to interview for this position. And I just want to say thank you for that. So to answer your question, tell, tell you a little bit about myself. Well, I first majored in psychology at North Carolina State University. And, and there I first got acclimated to science and I got interested in uh, clinical research there. I did research there uh, in a lab where we studied plant proteins. And then I decided I wanted to go to medical school. I went to two years of medical school at such and such university uh, where I then realized that medicine wasn't for me. And instead of continuing on the long path of medicine and realizing that it wasn't for me, I decided I would drop out and consider a path in clinical research. I felt like with my uh, past background in uh, laboratory science and research and combining that with the medical knowledge that I had gained and all of the medical courses I took over my college career, that clinical research would be a good fit for my experience. And it has been thus far. So I first came to the company right after then. I had an internship for a few months where I did a lot of TMF management and reaching out to sites and reaching out to uh, PIs and study coordinators and getting them to submit documents to us that we did not have in our TMF. So had a lot of experience with reaching out to sites and uh, talking to PIs and study coordinators, which I know will be beneficial to this role because this role will entail a lot of that. And really enjoyed that learn that that's what was one of my strong suits in order to be able to do that. And I was able after that contract to get hired on full time for which I've been in the full time position for over a year. And uh, still to this day, one of the my favorite things to do is build relationships with sites. And uh, that's that's what I what I love to do. So I've had a lot of experience with that over the past year and a half. And then of course I was working in a more sponsor facing fashion, but I feel like a lot of the skills that I developed doing that will also translate into this role and a more site facing role. So question number two, why are you interested in this position? 
Well, my original interest in this position, as I mentioned before, stems from my very high level of interest in maintaining and building relationships, which I learned about originally as, as my position as a contractor, where we did a lot of relationship building with sites, reaching out to the sites and really understanding what they needed from us in order to, for us to get what we needed from them. Um, that was only further uh, intensified by dealing with sponsors and building relationships that way. I recently attended a kickoff meeting where we're able to meet face to face with the sponsor, really build the relationship that will be the foundation for the success of the clinical trial for the next few years of which it is run and also for building that strong partnership with our company because we do have a partnership and there'll be more and more studies flowing through that pipeline. So that's why that's one of the important reasons why relationships really matter because they can lead to long fruitful partnerships and the same thing with uh, the sites. Uh, sites oftentimes will decide if they like working with a specific CRO or not based on the attention and the feedback they get from the people that are monitoring them, CRAs, in-house CRAs, etc. So having that strong relationship and that person that is able to really build and maintain that relationship is very important for this role. And I feel like that's something that I can bring to the table with my uh, extensive graduate level clinical background as well as my past experience calling out to sites, scheduling uh, PSSV visits, and you know handling a lot of that uh, nitty gritty uh, dealing with the sites. So that's why I'm interested in this position. I feel like I'm a, I'm a good fit for the role based on my past experience, uh, over a year and a half experience in the previous role. And, uh, you know, really maintaining relationships has been something that I've been passionate about. And uh, that is something that is absolutely integral to this role. So that was a pretty good answer. Um, here's the third question we have for you. Can you tell us about what previous studies you have worked on? Well, I have worked on a number of studies, about seven different studies during my time here. And I've one of the some of the ones that I've really enjoyed working on are rare disease because the patients oftentimes don't have many other good options because these conditions are very rare and they can be very debilitating just because there's not many options for them to choose from. So rare disease is something that I really enjoy working on. And, you know, oftentimes it's, we forget oftentimes being over in the other side of things on project management that it's really about the people and the patients and the lives we're affecting. You know, it's about, you know, that child that, you know, is going to get to grow up and hopefully live, live a better life than they were before without uh, the drugs that we bring to the market. You know, it's about that grandma that is going to be able to prolong her life enough to be able to see her grandchildren graduate from college or, you know, get married, have their first child, things like that. So, you know, it's really about the people in this field. And that's one of the reasons why I was interested in this position is because we get a little bit closer to the science. We get a little bit closer to the data. We get closer to the people conducting to the science, conducting the science and a little bit closer to the patients as well. Um, it's easy on the project management side of things to be a little bit removed from that and forget really why we're doing this. So that's another reason why I'm very interested in this role. But to piggyback to your question is the previous studies I've worked on is I've done, you know, an allergy study. I've done renal studies. I've done rare disease studies. Once again, not going to name them for uh, the interest of privacy for this uh, YouTube channel. But I would go in further detail there with this particular particular studies. Um, but I've done GI studies and uh, that's it. But um, basically, uh, in my capacity there, I've done a lot of TMF work. TMF is a huge topic right now because uh, it, it's it's easy to uh, not be clean at any given time. So whenever there's an audit or whenever there you know people want to get the TMF in check, there's this huge scramble usually. And you know that's honestly how I got my start in this industry is the TMF was in really bad shape. They needed help, so they hired ten. They hired eleven of us. Uh, contractors to come in and clean it up. You know, it was, it was rescue. It was in it was, it was in bad shape. 
So that's how I got my start. And that allowed me to, you know, be here where I am today. So I'm thankful for that in a selfish way, but TMF is, is something that's, that's a really big deal. And, you know, I've had experience on uh, many of those studies working on TMF and that, and that's both paper TMF and both ETMF and as well as sponsor specific TMF that I've had, uh, practice doing as well. So, uh, those are about the studies I've done. Okay. Very good. So can you tell us about a time that you went above and beyond what was required of you? Okay. So there was one time we were working on study binders and in order for us to meet our deadline, we, we had been pushing it back, pushing it back, but the site visit was coming up and we had about a week. So in order for the binder to get there on time, I had to send it out about two and a half to three days early. I mean, before the visit. So every day counted, every day mattered. So we get to the point where, well, first of all, I had to send in the materials for the binder and they had a maximum capacity for that. Uh, that could be emailed in. Uh, I could email it to us internally, but I could not email it to them. They had a maximum capacity for some reason. So in order to combat that, I hand delivered it to them. I could have split it up or something, or, you know, I think a lot of people would have just split it up because that would have been easier. But the reason why I hand delivered it is so I could shake the man's hand who was actually going to be making the binders. And so we could continue to build that relationship because I was going to be having binders made throughout the course of the study and for other studies as well. So having that face to face interaction would really, I think, benefit uh, me having that relationship as well as the study. You know, he'd be more likely to you know, do things or not charge me if I needed an extra binder or something like that. Um, so building that relationship is one of the reasons and that paid dividends later on in that study because, uh, when there was, there's a time when they make a proof, they make one set of the binders we needed first. And he said, normally I would send it, but if you want to, if you want to come up here, sending it to us would take about two days. And if you want to come up here, it'd be much faster. So he could send it to us, which would, you know, take a lot, uh, a lot of time, or I could just go up there really quick in about 10 minutes and about 10, 15 minutes and go in there and check off everything that need to be checked off. And then they can go ahead and begin production right then and there. Cause I knew time was of the essence. So I probably didn't have to do that, but I felt like it was necessary. So I went above and beyond there. Okay. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, so here's another question. Question five, how does your previous role prepare you for this one? Well, all right. I mean, so in my previous role, I obviously did a lot of TMF and in this role, there's going to be some TMF. So I feel like right off the bat, I have the opportunity to make instant impact. I mean, after training is done, of course. Um, but because I have extensive TMF experience you know, over a year and a half of experience doing TMF, I feel like I will be able to come in and make an instant impact being able to do TMF reconciliation, TMF maintenance, whatever TMF is necessary. Um, I have experience using metadata as well. And I know there's a lot of metadata used and uh, I just have some experience and familiarity with that. So I will be able to uh, have impact there as well. Uh, as far as, um, as far as, uh, balancing multiple tasks at once and prioritizing tasks, uh, as, as in my previous role, we had a lot of tasks thrown at us and the ability to balance those tasks and prioritize those tasks was very key. And I feel like that a lot of that comes with experience in the role. So as I develop in this role, I will get more and more experienced at, uh, balancing tasks and balancing uh, all of the things that are thrown my way. So uh, I, feel, I feel like I was able to cultivate that skill. And once again, once I get into this role, I'll be able to cultivate that skill as well. Um, I feel like uh, talking to people, talking to the sponsor had a, is, is probably pretty similar in the way that you would talk to a site or a study coordinator, you know, the way you would send your emails as professional as possible is something that would carry over as well. So I have a lot of experience there. 
and so I feel like uh, you know there's a there's a lot of things I gain from that. There's a lot of intangibles there as well. Um, email maintenance, uh, self awareness, uh, emotional intelligence. Uh, these things all play a role in being effective, probably at both positions. In both positions. Okay, good answer. Here's the another question we have for you. And this, guys, this is probably the last question I do, unless I think of some more. Um, what are the three best things that people would say about you? What are the three best attributes that people would say about you? Okay, good question, guys. Here's my answer to that. So I try as hard as possible to live by the creed, work hard and be nice to people. So I, I don't know if that counts as one or if that counts as two, but uh, I try to live and act accordingly in the workplace by those two things. So, you know, being nice to people in the office, that means anybody, whether it's the CEO or whether it's the janitor um, and everybody on the team, I try and be as kind as possible as well. I always try and work as hard as possible as well. Um, I think people would definitely say that about me, that I work hard, that um, I often do things that aren't necessarily asked of me just to be a team player and help out anybody I can in any way possible in need. Um, so we'll count that as one. I would say uh, people would say I have a high level of self-awareness. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. Um, I try and double down on the things that I'm good at and uh, try and improve to a certain extent the things that I'm not good at. Um, so I think that's important. How do you know what you can improve on if you don't know if you, what, what you're good at and what you're not good at? So uh, that's two. And I think the other thing people would say is that I'm diligent about my work, that I always do my best to put the best work I can out and try not to release it um, until it's done and always do try and put my best foot forward on anything that I do. And I'm very willing to try new things. So there's an understanding there that it's not going to be perfect usually when you're trying new things, but I feel like that's the only way to grow is to try new things and, you know, put your best foot forward and do your best on it. So that's what people would say about me. And I feel like I would say those things about myself as well. So that's it for your questions. Um, thank you guys for having me today for this interview. Uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, meeting with you guys again if necessary, but I look forward to uh, seeing you guys again. Um, if I don't see you again, good luck to you guys and all your future endeavors. I appreciate you guys having me today. Thank you very much. All right, guys. So that was a little interview snippet there. Uh, just some interview prep. That was pretty much for me, you know, throwing out some questions there and answering them how I would answer them right now. Um, get my juices flowing there on some things I would say in an interview setting. So hope that was helpful for any of you guys that are going through an interview soon or just some things to think about, some things to toss around when you're in an interview. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't anything else to say there. Email us at eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com for any uh you know, you want to be part of our resume review program, you want to advertise with us, whatever it is, email us there. Comment down below. Also, if you want us to reach out or if you want to reach out to us that way, uh, comment down below what questions you would ask in an interview or any you can critique my answers too. So throw those in the comments down below. Or if you thought any of my answers were good, comment those down below as well. So appreciate you guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as always. Take care.